Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today in a request from a super chatter, we are going to look at Neptune 6. This is one I looked at a long time ago. I haven't looked at it for a while. And so I went ahead and downloaded it, have a look at it. Of course, uh, this happened, uh, this request was made when I was looking at MX Linux versus uh, Netrunner. Now, somebody said in the comment of that video that Netrunner also has backports. If it does, I did not see it. I did not see how to activate it, and it's not an automatic thing. So, of course, any Debian distribution, you can enable backports by going in and editing the, some sources. The question that I had, and somebody said that it's already enabled, well, not clearly because I ran full system updates. It didn't update anything automatically, nor did I find any software manager to do that. Neptune, however, does actually have Debian backports already enabled. So it makes me wonder if maybe the person that left the comment was confusing Neptune for Netrunner. Because as I look into this distribution, we do in fact see that they have backports enabled. So first have a look at their website which is at neptuneos.com. They do have the 6.5 release. You'll notice it is about six months old, uh, seven months old now, but that's okay. It's based on Debian. Uh, but with backports actually enabled and configured out of the box in this case, it actually does roll. So even according to their website here, it says that the backport repositories are enabled so you can enjoy LibreOffice 6.4.5. Well, that's actually not true. I just upgraded my system without any extra intervention and I upgraded all the way up into the latest, at least 7.1. And so this actually, uh, if you are wanting a Debian with all the latest stuff with the Debian backports, this one does actually have it automatically configured. It is based on Plasma. And really that's what you're gonna have is you're gonna have a themed Debian based on Plasma, which also does have a newer kernel. So it's uh, right now the website says Linux kernel 5.6. We'll look at which kernel is actually being run by this when we get onto the desktop itself. But regardless, uh, this guy here does look like a decent option. So let's just go ahead and jump on over to the desktop. So here we are, and I've went ahead and already installed it. We do have two different package managers. We have Discover, of course, which ships with Plasma. And if I search for uh, software, there, there was another one in there. There was like a, a oh, there it is. Is it Muon, Muon? Uh, this one is basically like a uh, synaptic package manager. So you had two different options for the package managers over there. Uh, the big downside I see is, uh, even for me, as much as I like the skeuomorphic type look, the OS itself, the theming and such, does look a little bit dated. And it is using this, those old, the most horrible part ever about Linux Mint way back in the older days, not as much now, but in the older days as these old Linux Mint icons. Oh, they were god-awful ugly. Uh, I always thought so. In fact, I would put up Linux Mint, man, I, I love this, except those icons. Too bad about them icons. Fortunately, you can change them. Uh, but it does ship with those icons by default. So out of the box, though, we are getting a lot of, uh, a lot of good function here. And uh, just having a brief look, let me just go ahead and show you here. I didn't do any extra intervention. I just went ahead and uh, installed LibreOffice. Check, take a look at it. And... Um, now you can see it's version 704. So this is a more recent version of LibreOffice than the 6.4.5 they are advertising on their website because that has rolled several times in the last six months. So basic utilities, we have an image writer, which I always love a distro with an image writer in it. And we have uh, just the variety of different other tools that you would anticipate uh, being enabled out of the box. So here's Inkscape. We do have that full suite of LibreOffice. We have Thunderbird, Chromium web browser. I don't think we have Firefox on here. Nope, no Firefox. So we are using Chromium by default instead of Firefox. Some of you will probably be happier about that one. Maybe some of you, maybe not. And we do have a suite of um, Plasma tools. Uh, we have uh, Kden Live is over here. We also have our door for music production. Just a couple games, not as many as some of the other ones were. We have our K Wallet. We have Zulu Crypt. And that's what we have as far as what is enabled uh, there. Let's go ahead and boot up a terminal. 
and we got a couple different terminals to go with. We'll go with console. First, let's go ahead and check our kernel version. So we are running 5.10. So the website says Linux kernel 5.6. That has since been updated on the same download, which is now 5.10. So it's going to work on more hardware cases than Debian will, but it's probably not going to work on the absolute edge cases. You sh should still be using something a lot more up to date than this if you are running on the latest and the greatest hardware. So that's kind of what we what we have over over there. Oh, let's go ahead and pull that terminal back up. I wasn't done in there. Let's go ahead and have a look at our repositories. So Etsy apt and here's our let's do let's just do nano sources list. So here we have Buster updates contrib and the non free. So it is going to be working with more of those out of the box and let's go with the sources list directory here we do have a neptune plasma list a neptune list debian and neptune backports so we do have some extra software available in the system as well so they are adding a few more things which they say they're adding more proprietary blobs so that is one of the downsides of debian is it generally does not work with a lot of your more proprietary systems maybe your your broadcom motors some pr um, pr Broadcom modems, wow, I drive off of that thing, right? Uh, Broadcom modems, maybe your Reltec modems, some printers. So this is going to work a little bit better. So if you are wanting to run Debian, this one would be a, a good logical choice. Really, the only downside I see on this is I just like just like the old Linux Mint. I hate those icons, <laughs> but we can go ahead and change the icons. So that's that's actually something quite simple. Just pull up our our settings here, and here we are. Let's let's look at Breeze. So there we are. There you go. Go with Breeze. Much better icons. There's a few other ones we have here. You can see that there's just a, a variety of different icons to choose from, and so. Out of the box, I mean, it's it does work quite nicely. You can just theme things up quite nicely in here because, hey, that's what Plasma does. Themes everything up quite, uh, quite well. So there is a very brief look here at Neptune. Overall, this is a, a very good distribution. It's not super heavy. I think it's maybe just about a two gigabyte download and installed without any problem on my VM here. I've no... Uh, no doubt it's going to install very well on any just basic computer you might have running around. So again, the highlights, it's going to give us Debian with the Debian backport. So we basically are going to have Debian with some newer software available to us. It's going to work on more hardware than your basic raw Debian is going to work. And it has the non-free sections there. So if you're a pure 100% FOSS guy, this one's not going to be the distribution for you. But if you're okay with some proprietary things to get a Linux system working well, this one does actually have a lot of that stuff built in out of the box. Overall, Plasma is an excellent desktop environment, so that's a good choice with that. Too bad about that theming, but very easy to change that without actually having to install anything else on the system. And uh, they just give us a couple theming options there. Newer kernel than we have on regular Debian. We do, do also have System D, at least System D 245.6. That's what's on their website. It might be have rolled up as well. And uh, really, that's what we have. So it's going to work well. It's going to play your media. It's going to be a good, clean desktop environment. And that's really what we get with Neptune OS. So throwing this into the list of the two other distros, the Debian based on Plasmas, I would probably put this one a little bit before Netrunner, but I'm still going to say MX Linux wins because of the, the extra system tools that the thing actually has built in. Versus we don't have anything... Uh, special inside of uh, inside of this one that we didn't have available on some of the other distributions. So there is my take on Neptune OS. Let me know your take on this distribution in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.